Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we are playing Shipwrecked. Now, this game has an intro that starts in the beginning, so in a minute, you're gonna hear me react to that before I did my intro. But this is meant to be like a long lost N64 game, and obviously, it's a horror game, and just looks like a ton of fun. As somebody like myself, I grew up in the 90s with the N64. I was a kid when the N64 was around, and we actually had one in the house and had stuff like Mario 64 and Zelda Ocarina of Time on it. It was a great console. But this is one of those games that was meant to be on the N64, but was lost to time. And now we've rediscovered it, and it's going to be like, I assume, a bit different to the standard game you'd buy in Walmart or something. So with that said, guys, let's dive into Shipwrecked. I think this game's meant to have several different endings. I'll try and unlock them in this video. Either way, I'll probably do a story explained on it at some point. So don't worry if we miss a few. Let's dive in and see what Shipwrecked is all about. Hello. Hello. Hello back at you. What you are about to play is an unedited version of Shipwrecked 64. Information on the game has been very sparse since its soft launch in 1997. So this was meant to come out in 1997, I'm guessing it's like a lost game. We had spoken to an eBay seller who had gotten their hands on the game, somebody named Daniel. The game would not work with any emulators, but after some tinkering, we built our own version of this game. The game contains some disturbing artifacts and glitches. It's not for the faint of heart. So it's one of those cursed Lost 64 games. Everything going forward is exactly how we found it, unaltered. So they've recreated it for us to play. Originally, this was just an N64 game. Here we go. The classic N64 logo submerged and now sinking into the depths of the ocean. That wasn't how it used to go down. It was a day like any other. Just a standard day on, on the seas, I'm guessing, on the high seas. Yeah, look at this. A bit strange, it looks like real life. Like a real photo. Oh, that's scary. Bucky and his friends were on a fishing trip. It was around then when Bucky noticed a storm in the distance. He warned to tread carefully as the seas may be chaotic ahead. Why do these characters all look really freaky? <laughs> but you read the title so you know this isn't what happened, yeah they became shipwrecked. Bucky crashed his boat onto the island. He survived, yes his friends seem to have been taken by the waves for ruining the piece of the island, I think that said. Now you get to help Bucky gather his friends and escape. Ah, so we have to play as Bucky and find the other friends on the island, I think, and then get back off it on the boat. So that's like the mission objective of the game. I don't know how long this game takes to get through, but I've been told to use the controller by the developers, so yeah. It's weird, we can't turn, like with the analog stick you have to tap it to turn like once at a time. So it has a peculiar way of turning, but I guess it's because it's meant to be an N64 game. They didn't have dual analog back then, you had to do stuff on the bumpers. Oh, I can jump, nice, you have to jump the steps. We've got an eye on the door here, let's see if we can read the sign. Oh, the park, okay, so this way to the park. Oh, we've got a punch button, if we press the uh, right trigger we punch. It's gonna take me a while to get used to these controls. Living quarters. And you have to walk away from the sign to uh, get rid of the message. Let's go in the living quarters. Hey, is this one of our friends? What does that say? The beach. Oh yeah, this just directs us back to the beach. Let's have a look at this guy. Bucky! Listen, I really need your help. I had a really bad boat accident. Like you did, but with my own boat, hence why I'm here. My boat is stuck on the top of a hill and I need you to get it down for me. Just don't move it if it ever gets dark. There's a lot of strange things around here. That's a bit sinister, isn't it, guys? Don't move it if it ever gets dark. Now we've got a mission objective. The arrow is guiding us out this way and it looks like we have to jump across these platforms. Okay, that is weird. 
I think we have to just... We only move when it's not dark, basically, I think is what he said. So when it freezes like that, we have to stay perfectly still. Okay, let's go. The platforming's hard because you don't get a lot of time to make these jumps, you know? I'm really scared of what might happen if I move. I'm also scared that maybe it'll freeze at the nighttime sequence at some point and we'll be stuck in this light room. No! Okay, we're okay. I thought we were actually gonna get got then because I was still moving when it was dark, but we're okay. Can't see, I think we can jump down to this. It is like those old N64 games though, because they always had bad cameras, you could never tell exactly where you needed to go. You was always trying to like figure out where the ledge was, but you wouldn't always know and you'd have to make a leap of faith. And they captured that quite well with this game, the most annoying part of those old 64 games, you know? Alright, let's keep going up. Oh, we've got clouds now to stand on. Do we get limited time on these clouds? That's the question. Hey! No! We fell down! Are you kidding me? What happened? Wait, I don't get it. What happened? Did something grab us? I'll go back in guys and we'll restart from where we were. Because I don't know what happened then. Okay, here we go. Oh, I died again guys and... Something's happened. I don't know what this is. Is this like an ending? Did I get like a bad ending or is this meant to happen? Oh god, what is that? Is that like a one of the characters? Oh! Wow, yeah, that's like- that looks like Bucky. What's he doing? He's hitting something with a chair, with like a desk chair. But this looks like it's... This doesn't look like it's in the game world, this looks like it's in real life. Wow, I mean, we're still back in the game at the same spot. That's so strange. Okay. Let me see if I can just replay the game. So yeah, this is very strange, guys. So last time I died on this, because I moved when it was dark, we actually had um, that weird cutscene where it seemed like Bucky, like a monstrous version of him, was beating somebody with a chair. And... Oh, wow. Look at the back of... When I turn the camera now, you can actually see a new image there. It's all, like, uh, distorted. Like a distorted face. This game's actually really creepy and really well done so far. Because it... It uses a lot of little techniques to make it... You know, really freaky. So close to the boat, come on. So what do we do now? It says... Something on the screen, I can't read it. You freed... Walter Warus, nice! Took me long enough. But I'm not going to show you all that in the video. Did it. Thank you so much, Bucky. I knew I could count on you. That's alright, all right, Walter. I'm going to go run up to the shore now and hopefully you can get back. Yeah, man. You get back to that shore. We're now back in the game. We've done the first mission. It's taken me 20 minutes to, <laughs> to get through that. But I'm not going to show you all in the video because that would be horrendous. So now we're going to explore the beach a bit, I guess. To see what else is here. We've got lots of doors, but we can't seem to, like, actually open any of them. So this one goes to the... Th oh, the theatre. Should we check out the theatre? That sounds interesting. Look at this place. It doesn't look like much of a theatre, though. It looks like some benches in a room. Oh, what's this character? Oh, look who decided to show up. Bit late to the party, aren't you? Listen, I was cooking some stuff for the wolves. They're getting a little hungry right now. But, uh, I left the oven on. Multiple of them. But, can you go in there and just turn it off for me whenever they start to smoke? Thank you. <laughs> so we gotta turn ovens off when they start to smoke, is the gist of that conversation. I guess we just press the B button on them when they begin to smoke? Is this one smoking? Yeah, this one is. 
They turned a different colour, so we kind of get some heads up on that. This one's going to change colour, yeah. Nice, okay. Any others? Oh yeah, this one. There we go, we're getting all the ovens. This one's a lot easier, actually, than the previous one. Oh no! It's gone... It's gone a different colour. I think we've uh, messed up here, guys. Well, I have. Hit that. Hit that. Hit that. Oh, God. We've missed one round here. This one's smoking. This one's smoking. Did we do it? I think we have. I think we've done it. I don't know because the screen changed colour. I don't know if that means like we've messed up enough that we'll not get a good ending or something. I'm not sure how the endings work in this game yet. We kind of have to figure that out, you know, when we play through it. But it seems like we freed our friend, so... GG, I guess. That one's locked. But yeah, this is very strange because, like, it seems like we actually messed up there, right? Or I messed up. And the screen went a different colour because I'd missed an oven for too long. We kind of pulled it back and salvaged it before anything bad happened. I think if we had probably, like, messed up completely in there, we would have got another one of those cutscenes like I got in the other game. Where it shows, like, Bucky doing something really freaky and weird. Anyway, I'm going to go to the park next. We haven't been to the park yet, so... Let's check this place out. Oh, what's this? Looks like a film projector, doesn't it? Let's speak to this character. This looks like one of our friends. Oh, Bucky! Hey! So, uh, we're being held on probation, apparently? So they want me to gather around 20 coconuts, but I can't find any... need to find any. 20 coconuts. Sure, her voice is really distorted. The more we speak to these friends, the more distorted their voices become. So we need to find 20 coconuts. We've got 156 to do it. Okay, let's go. I can already see a few on the horizon. So if we just move from one side of the stage to the next, we should easily get 20. The music is really somber and creepy though. Wait, what the heck? Oh, we've got to stop moving. I remember. We've got to stop moving when it goes that color, haven't we? Because that's what we were told before. Oh, maybe that's what it, that other thing was when we were uh, cooking. It's meant to go dark. And I kept moving, so I don't know if that was a you know mistake on my part there. I'm staying very calm, guys. We need one more coconut here. And it's not anywhere to be found, as far as I can see, at least. I might head back to where we were before. Because I feel like we've missed one somewhere. Come on. Where's that last coconut? Oh, I can see it actually. It's over here, look. We should be fine. And boom. We good? There you go, all your coconuts are collected. You freed Olive Otter. Nice. Perfect. Thank you, thank you. I'll meet you at the shore so we can head out. We're all gonna get off this island together. Okay, so now we're back in the central hub. Oh no, we're not. We're back in this place. Who is this? Is this one of the wolves they were talking about? <laughs> oh, what do we got here? I've already put all your other friends to work, but I think I can do just the same for you, buddy. Now, a little while away from here, there's a fort that's laid abandoned for a very long time now. And inside of that, mounds of treasure. Ooh. Gather at least 40 of it, and then bring it back to me and give you your boat back. How's that sound, buddy? Eye for an eye. Come on, get moving. Eye for an eye. Well, you took my boat to begin with, so... I don't know if I call it an eye for an eye. Treasures out of 40. Oh, man, we've got a time limit, so we better get going. Oh, we've got 3 out of 40 there. Okay. So we open these chests and we get like three treasures at a time, so it's not as bad as it seems, but we are in a maze by the look of it, which is kind of bad. I'm going to run. I don't know why I'm walking. We need to run. Maximize that time. 
Oh yeah, we're back in the first room again. Okay. Problem with these kind of games is these kind of uh, maze-based games. I'm really bad at memorizing, especially when it all looks the same like this. I just kind of wander aimlessly about. So hopefully we luck through this one, because otherwise it's going to take me a long time. Luckily, through the magic of editing, you guys don't have to worry about that, but for me, it might suck. Oh god, what's that sound? What the hell is that? Is something in here with us? I think something definitely is in here with us. I'm in a dead end, though, bro. Oh! Okay, yeah, that's like a weird, like, demon thing. What the heck? It's got, like, a cow skull. We don't want to go down dead ends when that thing's after us. Just hit all of these on the way. Go. Keep going. Go! Ah! No, 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 no! Stay away! No! Stay away! We've done it! I think we did it just as he was about to get us. 43 out of 40, nice. We got the boat back. Sweet. That was freaky. I don't know what that thing was. <laughs> oh, would you look at that. Oh, you've done yourself well today. You can have your boat back. I don't mind at all, really. Okay. Ah, rich. Yeah, he's rich, man. Go to the boat. Wow, the music's kind of gone a bit spooky sounding, you know? Let's talk to our friends. Can we go back? Can we even talk to you guys? I guess not. I guess we just get out of here because that music is uh, spooking me out a little bit. Okay, onwards. Out to sea. I think we've completed it. And just like that, Bucky and his friends sailed away. The end. See, I don't think that's the end, right? Unless there's something more now. It doesn't feel like that should be the end of this game. We've just scratched the surface with that ending, guys. Basically, I think there's a lot of secrets to find. I'm going to delve a bit deeper in a second. But overall, you know, my initial thoughts are that, like, that was a really cool game. I had a lot of fun playing it. But I want to kind of look a bit deeper into it and see... You know, what? there's more to this game, right? There's more to this game, so we need to try and unlock some of those secrets. We found one on the first game when I died enough. We found, like, this secret. So it seems to be tied to how many times you die. So maybe if we get consumed by the demon in that um, one maze area, and maybe if we don't collect the coconuts and we don't, you know, fix all the ovens, we'll see more footage of, I don't know, the true game that's hidden beneath. But we're just back to the title screen. So we got the, I guess, like, neutral ending, like the normal ending you would get if you do everything right. So I'm going to dive back in, guys, but rather than show you the whole playthrough each time, I'm just going to cut to relevant stuff. So if I find something new, you guys get to see it. If I don't, then I won't obviously include it, okay? So let's dive back in and find some more secrets. What the heck? Okay guys, so I was just sort of chilling out and um, I was rendering off my original piece of audio, my original like voice recording and uh, my original game recording before I jumped in to record the second part of this video. And then that weird intro played, I don't know if we caught the start of it, where I just left the game sat on the title screen and then it had that guy's face and like cheering and applause. I don't know if that's meant to be like the creator of the game or what, but it was really freaky looking. So I hope I got that in the video then. I just had to start suddenly recording again. Man, that was weird. So now we're back on the beach. Everything looks the same so far. I'll, uh, I'll, as I said, guys, I'll start playing this again. And if anything changes, if anything's new, I'll show you it, okay? Okay, so we've got the oven puzzle again. This time I'm just going to leave them. I'm going to let them all set on fire, and I'm going to see what happens, you know, if we do that. Because we might get, at the very least, another one of those secret movie files that we got before. Oh! This looks like something new. We got a... Yep. Oh, wow. 
so he's killing one of the employees uh, who worked on the game, I think. He's smashing his head. Ooh. 1990, that said. So that happened in 1990? So wait, was this guy like a mascot killer? And then they made a game of him? So yeah, we've got the video from this now. So that's really interesting. So it's basically when we fail these different events, guys, it's giving us backstory into what seems to be a mascot killer. A bit like a Five Nights at Freddy's type thing, you know, where you have this killer that existed and then it became, like, incorporated into games and stuff. Like, this was a N64 game that was made based on a mascot killer. It was a real person in a suit that would... Well, that killed a bunch of people at a company. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. I'm going to see if we can fail it again and what happens if we fail it again. Because, you know, maybe we get something else out of it. Oh, yeah, look, we got something new. Ah, oh, look, this is the remains of the guy. So basically, if we fail multiple times, we get more of the original vision or the original recording. Because whoever's basically committed these crimes seems to have recorded them as well. Oh, wait, it's... Now he's disappeared. Look, he's gone now. Our friend has gone, so we've completely failed that task. And there's a door. Where's the door go? Oh, guys, this is spooky. Wow. What the heck? So... We've got a picture of it. Is that a turtle there? And then we've got a picture of a house there, like an old house. There's two guys at the end of there. They look like doctors. Then we've got a picture of, I think that's the Bucky mascot. Bucky the beaver. Another one of Bucky there. Man, who are these guys? Oh, are they statues? Or are they actual people? I thought they were doctors. This is very strange. Wait, are these like victims or something? Because we've got a woman there. Oh! And there is a woman in the game, remember? Olive the Otter, I think? Then there's a guy up there. Oh! What the heck is that? What just happened? Look, we've got four people, there's four characters in this game, I think. Or is that woman the same? Yeah, I think that's the same picture of the woman there. Or is there three characters in this game? I think there's four, right? Then there's a guy there. I reckon one of these guys is the killer, Bucky. And the other three are his victims, right? Yeah, that, I reckon, is Bucky. And then these characters over here, because that woman's picture's used twice, I reckon these are his victims. I don't think there's anything else we can do, so I'm going to head through the door here. Ooh, this is weird. And we've got the oven on fire there. Starling application form. Tiffany Waters. Starlings have gone from a small... I couldn't even read that, guys. I couldn't even read it. Name Gary Wilson. Cause of death. Severe burns. No face. So that basically told us a bit about the victim. I didn't get to read his name, but I think this was the victim, like we'd speculated. He died from severe burns. Now... Was he murdered by our character? Because we seem to be playing as Bucky, remember? And Bucky is the character in all of these videos that seems to be committing these crimes. Guys, I, um, I didn't get to see what that said, that note properly, in the video. Because I'm probably going to do a story explain video on this game, I will not obviously go through it in this video while we're playing. But what I will do is I'll leave it for you to pause, okay? You can slow the video down and check what that note said if you want to read it properly. So let's talk to Olive Otter next and let's see if we can fail her game. Right, so now we have to, obviously, get the 20 coconuts. Man, the music's a lot more sinister than I remember it being last time. Unless I'm just completely misremembering. No, it definitely is. We did not have this creepy-ass singing last time. I'm not going to collect any of those, by the way, if I can help it. I'm just going to try and fail the task. I wonder if we can jump off the cliff, basically, and fail. Hey! Okay, I didn't do anything. 
Oh, damn. I just hit her. What happens if we hit her, actually? Does anything happen if we... Oh, it knocks the time down. Wow. When we hit her, the time goes right down. That's interesting. What? Oh god, that's freaky. I was gonna say we didn't collect enough coconuts. Oh. Okay, that's weird. Man. I don't think she's around anymore, right? That's actually kind of freaky. I wasn't expecting that. Um. Okay. Can we go in here now? Oh, we can replay her game. We get the foot. That was the first of the um, sort of secret cutscenes we get. I think we have to go through again and we have to slap her basically to knock the time all the way down. It's kind of a bit twisted, so just have to do this to her and you'll notice the time's going right way down again. Okay, sorry about that, Olive. We had to do it for the uh, good of a video. So what will we get now? Yes, look, we've got something brand new. Hello, this is Olivia Finch. I'd like to please submit a complaint. Anonymously, please. Brandon has been showing up every night to my residence. Uh, Brandon Lester, you know, the other costume guy? He just walks by, still wearing the suit, uh, sometimes just placing his hand on the window. Other times... He'd grab the sliding glass door, uh, jiggle the handle around, uh, like he wanted in. I'll wear the dead eyes of that stupid costume stare back at me. La last night, though, is the reason I'm doing this. Uh, Brandon walked over and, and, and just began to slam his head against the door. I don't know why, but it kept me up for the several hours this went on. He only left it around four in the morning, stumbling away. Leaving a gross stain all over the window. Um, please, please, just, just deal with him. I, I can't afford to keep losing sleep. Wow. So it seems like Brandon was the guy's name, not Bucky. But he wore the Bucky suit, and he was basically going to a live. Uh, he was basically going to Olive's house, her residence, and just creepily standing at her window and like leaving like dirty smears all over it. I don't know if it was like blood stains or what, but like. Yeah, he was basically being a creep, and obviously we know he killed other co-workers, and he eventually seems to have killed Olive, so that's very interesting. Now, we could go to the wolf next. Before we go to the wolf and do the maze, because it has that demon thing in it, I actually want to go and do the other character in here's minigame. There's another character in here, I want to do his minigame. Olive, as well, has now disappeared, so we've got two of the characters to disappear. We didn't go back to that weird museum area again. But I think we've already seen that, so we probably don't need to. So we need to... Wait, why are the ovens here now? I can't seem to do anything with them. So we get killed when it gets dark here. I think we have to just keep getting killed in this area when it gets dark. Or maybe we have to get to the boat and then get killed, I'm not sure. Either way, I'm going to just try and move when it gets dark just to start with, just to see what happens. Of course, we saw this cutscene um, the first time I played through it, but I'll show it you guys again. We see, I think, Brandon. He's in a Bucky suit. Someone is in the office at night. They encounter him, and he uses an office chair to basically, we assume, kill them. We can't actually see it. It's not shown. Like, most of the stuff in this game is just suggested. We don't see it. It's not, like, super graphic or anything. Now we speak to him again, and we see if we can get a second cutscene. Oh, what the heck? Why is Olive here? She hasn't got any facial features either. Look, she's got no eyes. That's really freaky, the way she just appeared. That actually creeped me out, man. That made me shiver. Yeah, here we go. We've got cutscene part two. Oh, man. He is freaky looking. But you can see the human eyes through the suit. So he was looking down on his victim there, and now this dude's gone, Walter. Man, that was actually a spooky one. I think that, uh, you know that picture I kept saying was a turtle or a tortoise? I think it was actually that image of him, like, 
looking down on the Walter character there. Is this new? That's the beach. Well, what's this one then? Oh! This is like a new door. KBZFQ2QPPN3. That's really weird. Wait. Should I write that down? Oh, we stay on this and it changes. I was just taking a picture on my phone. Oh my god, what is that? That is weird. Is this like the remains of his victims? That's very strange. Let's go through this door. Oh, we can't go through the door. Oh, we can. That's weird. I walked away and it opens. What? Man, this is spooky. What the heck is this? We got another statue in the middle. Another Bucky statue, look. We can hop across to that. I'm gonna have a little look on this island first though. This game is really good guys, it keeps going, it's quite long and there's so many secrets to find but I don't feel like, you know, I've ever had to look up a guide and figure out like how to unlock the secrets, you know, using another video. Like I've just found them organically because it does it, like once you figure out the method, it does actually make it very easy for you to find the secrets in this game and I appreciate that. But anyway, it doesn't look like we can do anything in here. I think we have to basically make our way across this middle section, so let's go. We don't want to fall in the water at this point though in case it like resets the whole game. Can't slap that statue. I'll keep going to the other side. Yes, we did it. We made it finally. Okay, cool. Right, what are we going to find on this island? Is this a character over here? Is this Walter? Hey, Walter. Oh yeah, we've got his um, application form now. Nathan Stewart, male, died of assault. Louis W. Signed off on that. So we actually saw his death. So we get to see each of the deaths, don't we really? I wonder, could we have seen Olive's certificate when she was following us around, I wonder, if I had clicked on her? Okay, so we only have one character left, which is the wolf character. We'll do this guy's uh, little mini game with a demon. This time I'm going to let the demon catch us. So my current interpretation, guys, just so you know, of this game is that we are now in the inner, you know, Brandon's inner mind. And the thing chasing us, the demon chasing us, is his inner demon that causes him to commit these, like, terrible crimes. So I actually think... Oh, wait, look! We've got Olive following us around. Yeah, and these victims, that you know, the people that he's, like, killed are now haunting him. Which is why we're seeing them. This is in his inner mind. The victims are haunting him. Now we need to let the demon catch us, right? So I can kind of hear it walking about. We don't want to collect the treasure, we just want to get to the demon. Let it catch us now. As I said, guys, that was just a theory that I've had, so I don't know if that's how what will end up in my Story Explained video. Look, we've got another one just walking around. He's not attacking us this time. Where is he? No. Oh yeah, he got us. There we go. So will this give us a new ending? There is nothing for you here. Oh, it has changed. So you get grabbed a third time, something changes. What the heck was that face? So something changed that time. I just kind of let the character stay stationary that time and the demon came up and got me from the start. And it says there is nothing for you here. I think I just go back to the start now then. I think maybe we just get on the ship and sail away and hopefully it gives us a new ending because I can't really think of much else to do on this island. So let's see if we get something new. Stop. What is he trying to say? That's weird. I couldn't make out what that was meant to be. And just like that, Bucky and his friends sailed away. Okay. Oh, this is new. What the heck? Man, what is this? It's like a really long-necked creature. Man, that is freaky. What the hell? Is 
they're all like um, distorted looking, aren't they? Like really creepy. Like there's the walrus, but they're all like super insane looking now. It reminds me of um, that creepy pasta. I think it's called Pirate Cove or something. And there he is. There's Bucky, the beaver with those sharp teeth. The end. So is that like the actual ending that we're meant to get? Or is there going to be more? I still feel like there will be more than that, right? We're starting to piece together the mystery, but it feels like there should be something else. I think this is new, right? This, this seems new. No, this is the same. This is just the end credits. Guys, I almost want to dip back in just for one final look because I feel like I might have missed some stuff. Like, I feel like if I'd got Olive's application slash death certificate, we would have got maybe something more to that ending. I think it's one of those games where if you probably unlock a certain amount of stuff, you get like more and more. Because that ending, it was creepier, sure, but it still wasn't that conclusive, right? So I do think there's more to find. I'm going to have one more attempt to find stuff. We've still got all the characters on the main menu, so it seems like... Yeah, nothing's really changed there. I'm gonna dive back in, guys. I'll try and figure out, like, a new ending. If I can find it, great. If not, I'll, uh, wrap the video up. Okay, guys, so at this point, what I want to do before we try and jump in and find the final secrets, if we actually go to my game folder here, I just noticed that in the game folder itself for Shipwreck 64 is a file called Resources and it says Ignore there. So the developers obviously want us to have a look at this because they've put Ignore in brackets. You know, it's inviting us to have a look, right? It says tools here. And then we've got all these files. And um, it's very, very strange. So the first one says beaver scratches. And if I open that up, guys, as you can see on screen now, we've just got a notepad document. I don't know what we're meant to do with that. Funny fellow. Look, this has got a YouTube link on it. Let's go to the address then and see what it gives us. So this is unlisted. And this is on Squeak's Decorge. Alright guys, I'm going to play this for you guys, and you can uh, check it out. Something about him just, just felt wrong. Just horrible. Sometimes I swear he's not a person. So I think that's meant to be from Olivia, who obviously used to witness the mascot guy Brandon or Brendan coming to the window and like smashing on the window with his suit on, being really creepy. And that's an interview with her talking about him, I think. So there's one called Funny Photo. I have no idea what that means. That's just a load of like jumble. He died. What's this? My dad died. I had to fill his will out. I can't handle this. Maybe this is from uh, Brandon, you know, the mascot killer. I saw a starling last night is the next file. Then I threw up. I saw a starling last night. Then I threw up. That's really weird. The next one says it's under Futureland 2020. I saw it there on my tour and I snapped a photo. My camera was then confiscated. Nathan is the next one. We found Nathan without his effing leg. Ooh. New intro for the studio. I made this a few years ago for Broadside back when I worked there as an intern, so Broadside is a company all these people worked for. I wanted to make a long lasting impact and designed a new logo. They scrapped it without telling me. Edit. Thank you guys for the silver. So let's look at this one. This is another YouTube link. So here we go. This is the intro. It's pretty creepy. Very blurry and low resolution. I don't know if I like that. That's pretty spooky. Smile for me. What kind of happy thoughts make you smile? I have a lot of thoughts, but not a lot of them are happy. I always think about the beach. It makes me feel calm. It's simple, relaxing. But then I begin to feel the arms, the hands, the fingers, and under I go. I wake up not long after. So it seems like if this is being written by the killer, by Brandon, it seems like he's got this sort of inner demon and um, sometimes it takes hold of him and he'll, you know, he'll commit these crimes. It's almost like, um, it's almost like a dark side of him, you know, something that's willing him to do something or a demon possessing him or something I don't know 
I mean, it could be a demon possessing me. Did it actually see a demon in that game? Unreal 1997. Shipwrecked is a licensed Unreal Engine game. The copyright holders of Shipwrecked, Connor Thomas and Mark Mullins from Broadside Animation, have received a grant to use the Unreal Engine. Experimental Ultra 64 support included, which was the code name for the Nintendo 64, tweaked to work on silicone graphics systems, and that was the graphics chip the N64 used, just in case you guys didn't know that stuff. Thank you for your interest in the Unreal Engine. So this was, I guess, from Epic Games on licensing the Unreal Engine for the game. What I think of you. This message goes out to Brandon Lester. Yeah, so it is Brandon his name. I couldn't hear. It says, F you, your best pal. So that's all the files we've got, guys. Gives us a little bit more insight into the game, and I thought you might be interested in seeing that. So I guess we hop back into the game, and I'll have one final look around. I'll see if I can figure out anything more about it, and uh, if so, I'll include it in the video. We're finding so much additional content right now. It's like a rabbit hole. It keeps going deeper and deeper. What I'm going to do now is look for secrets, extra things that I've maybe missed in the environment. Just have a good, like, poke around and see if we can find anything else. It might lead us to, you know, getting some additional information on these uh, sort of dark events that occurred. We can fall off here. There's a reason I reckon that the wall has disappeared. If you explore this area before we have a time limit on, before this mini game, there's actually like a wall that runs across here. So the fact that it's gone, I reckon there might be something around here that we can get to. Oh! I saw something there. There's actually something on the cliffside. As I was falling, I was trying to like spin the camera around, and there is actually something on the cliffside. Okay, let's go. Yes, we did it. We made it. Okay, good. Before I was pressing the wrong button. Wow, okay, this is weird. Look at his face. What the heck? Man, he looks like possessed. There's like a beating heart up there. All right, this is freaky. Am I meant to go up to the beating heart? That is the landmark, I guess, for this area. Oh, God. What the heck? And now we're back. Can I go in here? No. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know what's done, guys, honestly. I think it might have triggered something in the level, though. It must have done, right? Oh, this is new. What the heck? Yeah, this is new. I've never even seen this place. Where was this door then? It's like a work in progress part of the game. Because it's not finished. It's not all textured yet. That music's really loud as well. I'm kind of freaking out a bit. Like it's going to suddenly go Aah! in my ear. So prepare yourselves, guys, in case we get that. I have warned you. I'll probably lower the volume in the video anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. Can we just go down the stairs? I thought this was full of water. Oh, it is, but we're, we can walk through it. Cool. So we explore down here. Are we looking for something in particular? Oh, what's this? Is this... Oh, this is Olive. Hey, Olive. Oh, we've got another one of these. This is how we get olives. Olivia Finch is the name of the human. She was drowned. Huh. Johnson, it says there. Someone signed off on that called Johnson. Okay. Interesting. Bit weird. Wait, what the heck is that noise? Man, this game is super creepy. What the heck? I'm going to have a look at this sign as well. We get a new thing from the sign. Because it's got a one at the end instead of a three. So we can get one what we can get one of these for each character guys. We should get a cutscene, right? That is really loud. Yeah, we get another one of these. We've seen this before. It's the same one. Interesting. So yeah, we can unlock one of those secret areas for each of the characters, it seems. The museum, I think, is the one we unlocked for uh, the dude with the fires. Right, let's head back to the boat then. I think we've done everything. We've got all the certificates off all the different uh, characters. 
So now we can go back to the boat and end it. And hopefully we get a different ending this time. Than the one we got originally. So this is the same at the moment. I really hope it's going to be more. <laughs> yes, this is different and it's freaky. Wooden puppets lay across the island. They make strange noises that seem to recreate the surrounding sounds. Gather all of them and take them to the campsite, did that say? Couldn't read it, it was so quick. Wow, okay. This is very uh, oversaturated or undersaturated, I should say. Kind of burning my eyeballs a bit. Alright, cool. There's an eye on the door. Let's go. Oh, it's normal again. So we've got to find wooden dolls that make that screaming sound, I think. I can hear one. That's horrible. I think it's here, look, I can see it. Wow, that's freaky. So that's Olive's doll. Hello? Who's there? Hey, this is Mark. Oh! Hello! What's going on? Well... Today's the day, buddy! Hey, you got the demo ready? Demo? Oh, yeah! It's all set up! When are you coming over? Uh, 5 p.m. sharp. I'll be bringing Brandon over to film the commercial, like you asked. Oh. Already? You did ask for it. I... Alright. So it seems like there was another person involved, someone that filmed it, and then Brandon would be, like, the guy that, like, takes someone down, who would, like, be the guy that kills someone. And uh, the other guy would like film it. It's very strange. And we had those certificates that were kind of like talking about the process, I think. It's a very strange story. I have to dip into it. I can hear it. You have to follow the sound. Yeah, so this is going to be another doll here. And another bit of evidence. Okay. So, you use this little stick with your thumb down here. Mm-hmm, yeah. This is the weirdest remote I've ever held. Yeah. It is not too well designed. Just hold it like this, okay? <sighs> gotcha. So, uh, a hand in the middle, and a hand on the right? Yeah, it's got all the best buttons. <laughs> all right. I think they're talking about the N64 <laughs> controller. Yeah. Now move the joystick around. Oh, yeah. That's, that's awesome! He, he's walking! So they're, yeah, they're playing a prototype of a game. Connor, look, it, it doesn't even look like Bucky. What? <sighs> Buddy, you, you know what I mean. Just, look, this, this is Bucky. This is the face millions around the world recognize as a pop culture icon. That is a beaver in a blue suit. Yeah, so he didn't like the way whoever that was, I don't know if that was meant to be Brandon, but he didn't like the way that Bucky was represented in this game looking like this, because obviously Bucky in real life, the beaver, he looks really freaky and weird. Even though that guy was saying he's beloved around the globe, I mean, he's kind of disturbing looking, right? Oh, there's one on the beach. Nice. Let's get this one then. So another one down. Chief of the Wolves. Yeah, of course. Just, Connor, you're, you're telling me with the vast amount of characters that we own, you picked up some random wolf and dropped him into the game? We're not making this game for your son, Connor. We're making this game for the millions of people who look up to our brand. Oh, that's good. Spot. This... Connor, just... Look, I'll, I'll give it to you straight. Do you have any idea how much money your company sunk into studio grounds? So it seems they had a falling out over the brand and how the game was being handled. Connor was seemingly making it for his son, and I think I think that's Brandon, the other guy. He basically wanted Bucky to be very different and how it was portrayed, you know, before the game was a thing. I'm gonna try checking like the secret rooms and stuff maybe. See if there's any in there. Because I think we've looked over most of the island. Oh, I can hear one. I can hear one. Here we go. Do 
Do you really think we can extend our generosity to you for that much longer to create this? I don't know. I don't know. What do you What do you call it? A game? I can't even tell. I'm saying we're done. We're not putting up with this project anymore. Unless you can pitch something to us that is the technical marvel you describe, I don't want to see it. We cannot keep sinking money into this. Oh. Damn. All right. I can see I'm not wanted here. <laughs> Maybe the guy making the game was one went crazy. Check the front yard, Pat, grab the camcorder. I left instructions on how to add videos to my files. I know you don't use the computer much, but I truly need you to do this. I'm proud of you, son. You just need to do this for me. Also, Mark told his son, Brandon. Brandon was Mark's son, I think. And he got his son to do all this crazy stuff. So it was the dad that influenced the son. That's dark. So the dad was the demon, I think, the whole time. What's this, though? Looks like a tree house or something. That's quite a pleasant house, though. I mean, imagine living in that. It's like kind of country estate house or something. He was obviously quite wealthy, this dad, because obviously the Bucky brand was meant to be quite big. Oh, it's distorting a bit. This is taking a dark turn. Oh. Did he jump off the top? I think that was maybe with the dad. He was like really dismayed at what happened. I don't know though. I'm just interpreting it as we go. Now, what? Where are we now? Look, we've got an exit door here. To the exit. Let's go. This looks like the true ending of the game. I knew there would be more. I'm glad we stuck it out. I've been playing this for about three hours at this point, but it's for the good of a video, right guys? Yeah, that's the end again. Anyway, that was a cool game. Very, very cool, actually. Especially for a free game, you know? Oh, we got the final one. Brandon Lester. Um, I didn't actually see how he died then. You guys will have been able to see that in the video, though. As I said, I might make a story explain video on this game. It's actually quite interesting. Oh, and that is a creepy menu screen. That's definitely the true ending because the menu's completely changed and everything. Okay, guys, so I've actually found there's even more movie files in um, one of the folders for the game. Now, I think some of these are ones we've seen in game, but there's also some additional ones. So what I actually want to do is just play through a few of these and just see what they're like, okay? This is the first one. It's kind of sinister and spooky to begin with. So who was this? Was this Olivia? There was also a girl called Tiffany, so I don't know if this is meant to be like Tiffany. Oh! Wow. Okay, that is actually freaky. I'm just going to turn the volume down. You freed Olive Otter. Yes, yeah, so if this was for Olive Otter, Wow, and it shows the burning fire at the end because, of course, she burned in the fire. Okay, that's interesting. So that is something we didn't actually get to see in the game. It was, like, something that maybe wasn't used. What's this? Ooh, that's a freaky image. We've got a freaky image of Olive's face now. That looks really freaky. So I think that's after she was burned. I'll probably like uh, pixelate that just in case YouTube doesn't like it. But now we've got one which has an N64 cartridge. So there's the game, Shipwrecked. So he's just taking out Mario 64, absolute classic there, and plugging in Shipwrecked. He's got the old red 64. I always had the standard grey one. The red one was cool though. And here it is, 1997 Nintendo Presents. Cogware Games, that was a developer. Hey, everyone. Hey. I need your help. That's cool. Abducted my friends. And it's up to you and me together to get them back. So this was the original so you say, 90s commercial. Let's go rescue the... Or part of it. That's cool, yeah. So some of this stuff is just not included in the game. You literally have to dig it up yourself in the game files. 
Now we've got one called Bad Ending. With the final chapter of my life on full display, I think it's time we roll the credits. Let's look at all the wonderful people who made this possible. Thank you to my wife, Hilda, for leaving me stood up at my own wedding. Thank you to my client, Mark Mullins. Screw you, I wish only the worst for you. And thank you to my filming buddy, Bucky. Once the world finds out what you are... I couldn't read that then. Thank you to my son, Pat. If you're seeing this right now, it's because of him. And thank you for playing. And giving these corporate giants even more money. <laughs> So the bit we missed was, thank you to my filming buddy Bucky, once the world finds out what you are, it's all over. So that's pretty sinister, because he's obviously a ruthless killer. So now we've got this one, which is called BS Bending 2. Congratulations. Now you know what happens. Spread the message. It's a bit ominous, isn't it? We were meant to tell everybody. Well, I've put it on my YouTube channel, so that's telling quite a few people about it, right? Right guys, so now I can actually read you uh, the application forms as well because they have it in video format here. So it's called the Starling application form. It says Starlings have gone from a small idea, an experiment, to an essential part of broadside vacation. As a result, they are very expensive to both create and even more expensive to destroy in the case of any damage caused. By signing this form, you hereby swear at risk of termination that this Starling has been checked, tested and is healthy and in sound state enough that it will not attack any nearby guests, residents, staff, or another person and or animal. Penalties will be issued if this responsibility is mishandled. If this starling passes its test in the park, you may be able to receive compensation for your time. So looking at this and from what we've just read, it seems that Broadside Vacation was a kind of like a holiday park, something like Disneyland or Universal Studios, but somewhere, you know, people could stay and meet Bucky and all the other cast members from the show. I'm guessing this was kind of like a big brand franchise type character, right? What it seems to be is that the company Broadside were a bit corrupt and they wanted to do the usual trick that you usually get in these horror games where they wanted to experiment on humans and fuse them with the character suit. So basically this character, as you can see, is named Brandon Lester, well that's the name of the person. And so their target, the suit they wanted Brandon to merge with, was Bucky Beaver. So he went through this process which was called the Starling process, you know, these people were then referred to as Starlings. And by signing up to this procedure where they would kind of say, okay, you can, you know, use me for your experiment and I'll wear the suit and go around the park. They were hoping to bring mascots to life, kind of like Bendy and the Ink Machine a little bit you know, trying to bring cartoons to life. They were trying to fuse these people with the suits so that they would bond with them in a certain way. I don't know how they were doing that, but it had some kind of psychological side effects. And as we can see, Brandon Lester successfully merged with his suit, Bucky Beaver, but that led to him killing the other mascots, the other people in the mascot suits. So it seems like this is the reason that Brandon went crazy and then, you know, went on a killing spree because these were human experiments called Starlings. So now we understand that, obviously, the whole game makes a lot more sense. Okay, so next we've got these deaths for each of the people that died, so let's have a look at Gary to begin with. I used to be a man named Gary Wilson. I was a mascot handler at Broadside. One night, I went to the kitchen after my shift. Little did I know of the visitor I'd meet. Wanna see? Uh, I don't know. Do I? Do we wanna see? Oh, yeah, there he is. So this is how Gary died. This is Gary's death, which we already saw in the game. Gary Wilson, 1964 to 1990. Okay, so let's look at the next one. I used to be a man named Nathan Stewart. That is a creepy picture of a walrus. I was an animator at Broadside's offices. I was in the offices late one night sending an email. When I heard the visitor. And he was a guy killed with a chair, I think. Getting closer, here we go. Yup. Nathan Stewart, 1972 to 1990. 
And finally, we have Olive. I used to be a woman named Olivia Finch. I was a voice actor. One night, I was asked by my visitor to see him at the lake. That's when I saw my visitor. And she was drowned, of course. Pulling me under. Olivia Finch, 1969-1989. We've got one with Nathan in the chat room here. Dude, Nathan's dead. That's weird. Seems like the screen is just being recorded while he's sending this. Matt, something happened. Nathan's dead on the floor. And we have no idea who did it or what happened. He was found outside your office with several bruises on his head and missing his leg. What the hell is going on? Message... Oh. Message me back. He keeps uh, making little spelling errors and stuff. Message me back ASAP. I'm not messing around here. And then he sends that. So yeah. Okay. We are getting like more story from these files. But you have to sift through them to get the right ones. And we've got another one here. Um, and we've got Olive Intro. This is peculiar. We've got two mascots here. Look familiar? Does it look familiar? So this is Olive. I knew it was you in that costume. She's so talking about Brandon now, I think. It was a death match, but you followed him anyway. Oh, or maybe, no, this is, uh, yeah, this is Olivia. I always thought you were the smart one, Olivia. Yeah, so Olivia followed Brandon in her costume, and uh, she ended up dying. All right, guys, well, there are plenty of other videos, but a lot of them have already been used in the game. They're just clearer versions of the cutscenes we see in the game. And I've shown you all the ones with the relevant story information in them. I have checked through them all, and this video would be way too long to go through everything. So just to wrap things up then, guys, there was a character called Bucky Beaver. Broadside, the company behind Bucky, hired somebody called Mark to make a game based on the franchise. However, they didn't like what he was doing with it. Mark got really frustrated and used his son to help him basically film all these murders, which then were brought about by someone called Brandon, who was in the Bucky Beaver suit, who was a starling human experiment that Broadside had been experimenting on, and this procedure caused his mind to become unstable. Now that's the basic story that I can work out, there's more to it. I might do a story explain video on this one because it is quite deep. So don't take what I just said as the story. I'm going to come to that, you know, if I make a follow up video. But that's what I got from reading through this extra stuff. This has probably been a really long video. So thanks for sticking with me if you have. And I hope you've enjoyed it today. If you have, remember to leave me a like, comment down below. And of course, subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I will see you all on the next one.